Amid all this crisis, technological breakthroughs will develop at an unprecedented rate. Human-computer interfaces will stimulate cultural change. By 2035, an implantable information chip could be developed and wired directly to the user's brain. Synthetic sensory perception beamed direct to the user's senses. It is likely that the majority of the global population will find it difficult to turn the outside world off. ICT is likely to be so pervasive that people are permanently connected to a network or two-way data stream with inherent challenges to civil liberties. Being disconnected could be considered suspicious. Disconnecting from the hive mind will get the military police at your door in no time. Presumably at this point, they will be super soldiers. So if you're lucky, they'll drag you off to a forced labor camp as opposed to simply just bashing your brains in. What kind of class structure will exist in this nightmare world? A small, super rich elite and a substantial underclass of slum and subsistence dwellers. Where are those techno progressives when you need them? A more permissive R&D environment could accelerate the decline of ethical constraints and restraints. The speed of technological and cultural change could overwhelm society's ability to absorb the ethical implications. The nearest approximation to an ethical framework could become a form of secular utilitarianism in an otherwise amoral, scientific culture. The ultimate form of social Darwinism will be welcomed at long last. Galden's religion will reign supreme as the younger generations make eugenics a normal part of their life. Declining youth populations in Western societies could become increasingly dissatisfied with their economically burdensome baby boomer elders. This could lead to a civic renaissance with strict penalties for those failing to fulfill their social obligations. It might also open the way to policies which permit euthanasia as a means to reduce the burden of care for the elderly. Julian Huxley couldn't have said it better himself, but let's not forget Julian's brother, Aldous Huxley, author of Doors of Perception and A Brave New World. In 1962, he gave a lecture at the UC Berkeley in which he clearly laid out the vision of this planned future society. In the past, we can say that uh, all revolutions have essentially aimed at changing uh, the environment in order to change the individual. Today, we are faced, I think, with the approach of what may be called the ultimate revolution, the final revolution, where a man can act directly on the mind body of his fellows. The nature of the ultimate revolution with which we are now faced is precisely this, that we are in process of developing a whole series of techniques which will enable the controlling oligarchy, who have always existed and presumably always will exist, uh, to get people actually to love their servitude. Uh, th this is the, seems to me the, the ultimate uh, in malevolent revolution, shall we say. First of all, to standardize the population, to iron out uh, inconvenient human dis uh, um, differences, uh, to create, uh, so to say, mass-produced uh, models of human beings arranged uh, in some kind of a scientific uh, caste system. A number of the predictions which were purely fantastic when I made them 30 years ago uh, have come true or, or seem in process of coming true, not through terror but through making life seem much more enjoyable than it normally does. Uh, enjoyable to the point where, as I have said before, uh, human beings uh, come to love a state of things which by any reasonable and decent human standard they ought not to love. And this, I think, uh, is perfectly possible. One of the more recent uh, developments in the sphere of uh, uh, 
of neurology, the, the implantation of uh, electrodes in the brain. Uh, this, of course, has been done on a large scale. Uh, the behavior of rats with uh, electrodes planted in different centers. The technique was that they had a bar which they pressed and which um, stimulated this pleasure center, which was evidently absolutely ecstatic, because these rats were were pressing the bar 18,000 times a day. <laughs> and, uh, apparently, if you kept them from pressing the bar for a day, they would press the bar 36,000 times on the following day and would fall till they fell down in complete exhaustion. <laughs> uh, and they would neither eat nor be interested in the, uh, the opposite sex and would just go on pressing this bar. <laughs> In the cases, the few cases in which this has been done with very sick human beings, uh, the effects are evidently very remarkable. These people were suffering from the uncontrollable depression, and they were, they'd had a, the electrodes inserted into a, something resembling, evidently, the pleasure center of the rat. When they felt too bad, they just pressed a button in the battery in their pocket, and he said the result was fantastic the sort of things that might happen. I mean, what might happen if, uh, if these fantastically powerful techniques uh, were used by unscrupulous uh, people in authority? What on earth would, would happen? What, what sort of society would we get?